Another reason I think that this comparison is a little silly is that Lupe, in a lot of respects, paved the way for Kendrick. He was one of the most significant ones in the 2000s who has undoubtedly had an impact on Kendrick Lamar's artistry and career. Would Kendrick even be doing what he's doing if not for a guy like Lupe Fiasco? If you put Lupe on a stage mm -hmm. and you put Kendrick on a stage and you say, all right, just do like some stream of consciousness rapping, mm -hmm. Lupe's gonna just spaz. Yeah. Right, right, right. Lupe is that type yeah. of dude where Kendrick <laughs> yeah. is gonna just rap and rap and yeah. rap and it's gonna sound dope. Yeah. He's got all of these things working for him. Mm -hmm. So the radio is already looking to him. Okay. Whereas okay. even though yeah. Lupe was that at one point, he's not been that in a super long time. Mm -hmm. Now people just kind of look at Lupe as this kind of weird guy that makes these extremely complex albums. But it's funny, they look at Kendrick the same way, right. but it's just- That's what I was saying. Th there's yeah. just a different, there's a different machine working for Kendrick. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. A major label artist with inherent underground sensibilities, Lupe almost single-handedly spearheaded a wave of backpacker revivalism. A gifted MC from the day that he first picked up the mic, Lupe faced an interesting conundrum in that while he wanted his voice to be heard, he was adverse to fame from the outset. So much so that he famously had to be talked into the biggest feature of his career. I, I didn't even want to do Tyson Scott, but that one my piece. I was like, I'm over here, I don't do that. And my partner was like, nah, you gotta trust me, you gotta do this. And then from there on, we kind of clicked up and you know kept it moving uh, up until this day. Unwilling to compromise his vision for opportunities that others would jump at, Lupe served his hip hop's conscience and rallied against self-compromising in much of the same way that K-Dot does today. On Daydreaming, bars such as, come on everybody, let's make cocaine cool, we need a few more half-naked women up in the pool, showed him as a rapper who was less concerned with commercial success as he was about enlightening those around him. Rumored to have gang affiliations when growing up, Lupe, who used his landmark debut to discuss everything from domestic terrorism to America's colonial evils in foreign lands, could be seen as the original Good Kid Mad City. And to begin with, the rewards he reaped were comparable to that of Lamar. On his sophomore album Lupe Fiasco's The Cool, Lupe immediately found mainstream success with the single Superstar and became a household name. But just as he almost became a superstar and was approached to form a supergroup with Kanye and Pharrell in the form of Child Rebel Soldier, Lupe appeared from an outsider's perspective at least, to dislike the highest heights of fame. From the very beginning, Lupe struggled to juggle commercial pressure and what he felt compelled to say on Wax. Having discussed the difficulty in reconciling the making of accessible music for the greater good with the social responsibility he felt towards his fans, this is an issue that persists to this day for Fiasco. In later interviews, the benefit of hindsight has allowed him to articulate exactly what his place in the culture is. And for him, while the job might not be as glamorous as it could be, it is absolutely essential for the genre. Diamonds are shiny and fun for about an hour, right? But there's also a dark side to how they're created, he told the Financial Times. Have you ever seen a nightclub when the lights are turned on? Gross. The paint is cheap, it's sticky, the floor doesn't match the walls, but in the darkness, you would never know any of this. It's my job to shine that light and expose the dark side. Eager to bring what usually lurks below our society and the music industry to the surface, one thing that you can say about Lupe is that he didn't ever sacrifice his principles. Meaning that where K-Dot has been an acceptable face of rebellion, there have been moments in Lupe's career when his commitment to honesty has hampered his commercial appeal. For one thing, while everyone else was celebrating Barack Obama's ascent to the presidency, Lupe couldn't avert his eyes from other atrocities and social ills that were taking place before his eyes. We still dying in these streets, he wrote, wasting away in these prisons and trapped in mental slavery. And all you can come up with is vote your way out? Temporarily forced into retirement after his comments about how dirty execs were seen as anti-Semitic, Lupe's uncompromising approach meant that he was always going to have a niche audience, unless he took a more straightforward route to being a socially conscious artist. On the subject of execs, another factor which hindered Lupe from ever reaching the same heights as Kendrick would be his abundance of label issues with Atlantic Records. Precisely the sort of institution that he would normally stay away from, Lupe only ended up there due to a false promise from a hip-hop icon Jay-Z. I'll never forget it. Jay-Z hit me like, yo, I'm coming to Atlantic Records. I'm going to be the president of Atlantic Records, said Lupe's friend and mentor, Charles Patton. So Jay's like, I'm coming to Atlantic. I need you and Lupe over at Atlantic with me. I'm like, cool. I'm thinking Jay's coming to Atlantic, so I do the deal. When I get out of jail, Jay hit me at two in the morning like, yo, LA Reid hit me and offered me the president of Def Jam. I'll give you your masters. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. It was a courtesy call on some brothers. 
but really he was telling me he wasn't coming to Atlantic. Although the relationship was initially harmonious, Lupe's momentum was halted almost immediately as he reached the height of his fame. Looking to capitalize on the success of his biggest project, his follow-up record Lasers was originally planned for a 2009 release. However, it would be subject to a litany of delays which would almost leave him shelved by the label. As years passed, without the record emerging, Lupe told Complex in 2011 that the situation with me and my record company has gotten to the point where it's just like, we're really at our final straws. And as they continued to meddle, Lupe had no issues exposing the truth. The record company sent me a song and said, this is Lupe, you need a number one smash. They sent me the track and the hook. And they sent me seven of those. The last one is so ridiculous that when I recorded the verses and sent the record back to them, they called me back and said that they didn't like their own hook anymore and changed the hook 60 times. So if you tell me that my records are whack, then give me great records. So then you give me these records, I send these records back to you, you don't even like your own records. After protests organized by his fans, Lupe's long-awaited lasers would finally receive a release date. But while it was a victory for his fans, it wasn't necessarily a cathartic moment for an artist who had made too many compromises on his vision. One thing I try to stress about this project is, I love and hate this album, he told Complex. I'll listen to it and I'll like some of the songs, but when I think about what it took to actually get the record together and everything that I went through on this record, which is something I can't separate, I hate this album. A lot of the songs that are on the album, I'm kind of neutral to, as opposed to something like The Cool, which is more of my own blood, sweat, and tears and my own control. With this record, I'm a little bit more neutral with the love. Courtesy of the fact that he wasn't given his free reign to create his record as he'd intended, this meant that, unlike K-Dot, there are records in his discography that he feels active disdain for. Plus, even if he had a damn or to pimp a butterfly at a pivotal point in his career like the Lasers era, there's every chance that Atlantic, whose CEO apparently hated every track on Food & Liquor, may have blocked it from coming out in its original form. While he has since acknowledged that being on a major label allowed me to play 40,000 people at Glastonbury, it may have taken just as much away from his ability to become the embodiment of artistry in the mainstream that K-Dot is today. Despite the fact that Kendrick perhaps stepped into shoes that he began to break in during his early career, Lupe, who has controversially maintained that he's a better MC than Kendrick in terms of sheer skill, holds no ill will towards him, and is perfectly happy to give him his props. I love me some K-Dot. I always have, I always will. With that said, do I think he's a good lyricist? Yes. Do I think he's the best lyricist? No. Do I think it's lyricists that are better than him? Yes. Is he a better artist than me? Yes. Is he a better lyricist than me? No. Does he make better songs than me? Yes. Did I think Control was ridicule? No. Am I jealous of K-Dot? No. Did I personally give him his props in Chicago on stage as the next to take the crown? Yes. Is it on camera? Yes. Did I mean it? Yes. In this instance, Lupe's words suggest that while they occupy similar spaces and have similar stances, their goals and the way that they go about it are ultimately different. And from the outset, Kendrick's work has been more approachable to the masses than Lupe's ever desired to be. I, I love Lupe's music, obviously, mm -hmm. but Kendrick does make more accessible songs. Yeah. Kendrick is really good at combining intricate lyricism mm -hmm. with an accessible mainstream capability. Mm -hmm. Lupe doesn't really do that yeah. anymore. <laughs> Lupe just raps. It seems like once he got into this otherworldly lyrical space, yeah. his songs just became less accessible. But Kendrick can go to that weird lyrical space and still keep his songs fairly accessible. That's Lupe accessible a by choice. He's in this, this zone now where that's not his focus. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, Given the history that Lupe has shown, could he combine the two together now? I think he can. As articulated by Dead End Hip Hop, Kendrick seeks to impact the popular consciousness and will make adjustments to do that. While for Lupe, the craft always comes above all else. Rap for me is what I do naturally. The music business is what I choose to do, he told FT. I care about rap, but I don't care any more about the business side or selling records. I've always been a storyteller. When I was in the third grade, I wrote a play about a warring cat and mouse. I will be rapping right until the day I die. Although it may have been more of a slow burn than Kendrick acquiring a Pulitzer Prize with his third major label album, it now feels like Lupe's cultural importance has been ratified by recent moves. I've been holding this for a while, he announced earlier this year on Twitter. I'll put together something more sophisticated later that really captures the nuance and gravity, but for now, I'll just say it straight and raw. I'm going to teach rap at MIT. Suddenly seen as the scholar that he always was, this acknowledgement of his incredible rhyming ability isn't just in the past as on his latest album, Drill Music in Zion. Lupe made it clear that he is still as pivotal to the culture as he ever was, garnering the sort of rave reviews that he hasn't experienced in years. Should this late career resurgence continue, it seems that Lupe may finally get the plaudits he deserves. 
But if you ask him, he's ultimately content either way. In fact, Fiasco's degree of satisfaction with what he's accomplished was made all too clear when one of the culture's leading rappers argued that he deserved better. Following a tweet from Tyler, the creator, in which he declared that we didn't protect Lupe, man, the Shot Town legend responded and suggested that he was happy with his place in life. I'm still here, fam. LOL, he replied. I'm happy. Family good. Life is awesome. Make my little money doing side shows to fund my little side hustles. Whether he ever belatedly gets the voice of a generation status that he could have had or not, all that matters is that Lupe, much like K Dot, has expanded hip hop's reach in his own ways. And when it's all said and done, it seems to be all that he ever wanted to achieve in the first place.